Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. Today I thought we'd go over a very powerful deformer in Maya called a blend shape. You can find these under the animation menu. Create the formers blend shape, this first one here. Let's go into the options and you see we have basic and advanced. Now the advanced tab you probably won't go over in this video as uh, it's kind of more of a setting for all deformers, not just blend shape. We will go over it in a video on its own eventually. But let's start with the basics. And we will go over all of these settings here in the Create Blend Shape Options window. I'm going to go to Edit, Reset Settings, make sure that everything's at default settings for now. And what a blend shape is, it's a blend between two shapes, two or more shapes actually. So you have a base or, a, or an original object and then you can create different target objects that the original will blend its shape to change to match the targets and this will become more clear as we as I demonstrate this so blend shapes are used quite often with creating character facial expressions that's probably the thing that most people associate with blend shapes because you can create a character's face and head and such and then create blend shapes for having the mouth move for talking, uh, have the eyes you know, show expressions for surprise and anger and sadness and so on. You can have all these uh, different uh, movements controlled with blending between one, your base head with all these target heads. But for this demonstration and learning how this works, we're not going to create a human head. You know, sorry, that's a bit more uh, time consuming than I think these videos should be. So we're going to start with the base simple shapes like we always do and show how this works. So let's minimize this and just for the sake of demonstration, again, like I said, we'll go to create. Uh, we'll do a polygon sphere. We'll just create a simple sphere like this. So this will be our base shape. This will be the object that blends between different shapes. So what's the target going to be? Let's uh, duplicate this sphere. Control D to duplicate and move this over here. And now I'm going to change this sphere's shape. I'm going to right click and select edges. I'm just kind of, I'm just going to kind of select different edge loops and manipulate them just to create a different look. So it's obviously not just a sphere. You know what I mean? so we can see something happen whenever the blend takes place Oops. so you know it's pretty obvious that something's different about this sphere compared to this sphere wouldn't you say so I'm going to hide the grid for now so these would be our two shapes and this again like I said this will be the, the base I'm going to actually rename this sphere to be base and rename this sphere to be target so after naming my objects base and target I can now apply the blend shape and what you do first is select all of your targets and right now we're going to select our one target and you can have multiple targets you can have this sphere change into multiple different shapes if you uh, have the targets to do so so we'll select the target first hold shift and select the base so the base object will always be selected last. Go to Create Deformers, Blend Shape, Options. Edit, Reset Settings here, make sure I'm all default. And then the first setting here we have is Blend Shape Node, and it gives you this text box, and this allows you to, to change the name of the blend shape, which can be very handy whenever you're dealing with multiple blend shapes, so that you can name them properly and make sure that you know which blend shape you're changing and have them all named specifically. If you have multiple blend shapes in your scene and they're all called blend shape 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, for example, it can be difficult to remember, well, which one was blend shape 4? Does that control the eyes? Or does that control the mouth or the nose? Who knows? So if you call it, for example, uh, surprise eyes, you'll know that this blend shape controls the eyes and gives them a surprise facial expression. So I'm going to hit create. So now when I select my two objects you'll see my base shape has inputs 
surprise eyes as an input channel here. So when I click it, you'll see envelope is one. If I go back to my blend shape options, you'll notice envelope here was set to one when we created it. And then we have target. So envelope is one. Envelope means that the effect of the blend shape is 100%. If envelope is at 0.5, it'll be a 50%. If it's at zero, it'll be 0%. And then the target is named that because the object that is the target was named a target. It takes that name. So target right now is zero, which means that the blend between the base and the target object is at 0% right now. So if I click the target channel name and middle mouse click and drag, and I'm actually going to hold control while I do this, which makes the uh, transitions from 0 to 1 slower. It uses decimal points. Hold control, middle mouse click and drag. You'll notice my original sphere change shape between 0 and 1. And like I said, whenever it is targets at 1, the blend between the two objects has become 100%. So my original sphere has changed shape to match my target object. And I can blend between the two. So if I take my target all the way up to one, which is 100%, but then I change my envelope down, you'll notice that it starts to go back to its original sphere shape. So you can control how much of the target's shape is happening at a time at, at the time of animate you can animate these settings so you can have the envelope is 50% or 100% of the target shape and right now since we only have one target envelope kind of does the same thing as just affecting the one target slider but if you have multiple blend shapes and then you have the envelope uh, down to 0.75 or something then all the blend shapes that are being affected will all kind of sub be more a little more subtle and not 100% for all of them. Let's take this back to zero, 0 and if I delete my target and again go back to my base shape and change target you'll see that it still happens. So the original or sorry the target shape does not have to remain for this blend shape to continue the function. That target is simply there to create the blend between the two. Let me undo deleting it. Go back here and increase my target back to one. Now if I decide that my blend shape is not quite what I wanted, if I adjust the target shape, you'll notice that there is history involved and that the base shape will keep the changes that you make to the targets. So if you decide to change a target, the base shape after a blend shape has been applied will still retain those changes. So you don't have to worry about that. Like so. Now Maya comes with a handy blend shape editor so you don't have to deal with the channel box so much. If I go to Window, Animation Editors, Blend Shape. It gives us this window. And we have here, we have a little drop down for surprise eyes. If we had multiple blend shapes, they'd all be kind of listed here. So you can have different settings here. We have a slider. You just slide this up and down to change the uh, percentage of effect that the blend shape is having for this particular blend shape. And it gives us the name, which we can change here. So we wanted to change this to Surprise, we can. And you'll see over here, now that when I click the Surprise Eyes channel, instead of saying Target now, it says Surprise. So that name is where, where you'll see that change happen right there. You can click Select button to actually select that channel and hit Control A to go into its attributes. And you'll see the different options here. You'll see the weight, which is the percentage of effect. And 
there's here right here under the former attributes is the envelope and then the blend shape attributes for origin is set to local and we'll get back to that control a to close that so you can select the blend shape here you can hit the key button to set an animation for this at whatever time in the timeline you are you can say key all or reset all you can delete this uh, you can delete this blend shape if you decide you don't need it anymore so add base what this simply means is if you're at a percentage on these sliders and this works for all of them if you have multiple sliders here and let's say you're at like 0.44 here and you like decide that this shape here that's a good target shape I want to keep that shape right here for another slider if you select the base object and with the, this slider set here you click add base and it creates a new duplicate object and now base one if I slide surprise down to zero so now my sphere is back to a sphere and now I have base one if I move that all the way up it'll now match that shape so that's if you decide that you have a slider value that you like that shape you want to keep that as a target shape you don't want to have to find it on the slider to get back to that shape again you can choose to add base and create a new slider just for that shape and here you can see now I have multiple blend shapes so I have this one which matches this shape and you can rename it here so you can say uh, mid blink or something I don't know and then you have the surprise slider now one thing to keep in mind when you have multiple blend shapes like this and they all change and these blend shapes change the shape the same vertices on the sphere that they can compound on each other so if I choose to increase the surprise up to one so it matches this object over here our original change but then I increase this object now you'll see that the effect of the movement gets even more pronounced so it's adding the movement on this target to the movement from this target so it's kind of making it more additional of an effect even though this shape that my sphere is currently at doesn't match either of the targets it actually matches both of them because it's compounding the shapes together to create this shape so whenever you're creating your facial expressions for example or anything you can actually use a combination of sliders to exaggerate poses that you didn't necessarily make to begin with you can just increase the sliders a bit to make a change that's completely unique that doesn't have anything to do with the target it's a combination of targets and also this value goes from zero to one you can for example and let me get take this down to zero so it's back to our original target shape you can type in a number that's higher than one and it will compound the effect that way if I type in two enter you see now my effect has been doubled go to one enter it's back to normal but once you do that though keep in mind now that my slider has taken that change into effect and now it goes all the way up to four which makes a really unusual effect here so keep that in mind when you start adding values higher than one because you will this slider will become a different uh, range from zero to four in this case as opposed from zero to one which would be out here So key all, you see that these both of these sliders are within the surprise eyes category here. So keying all will key both of these sliders. You can have multiple sets of blend shapes and the key all button will affect only the ones within that set. And then reset all takes everything back to zero.